குறிஞ்சி சீனியர் செகண்டரி ஸ்கூல் சிபிஎஸ்இ நாமக்கல் சக்சஸ்ஃபுல் ரிசல்ட் ப்ரொடியூசிங் ஸ்கூல் இன் ஸ்டேட் எவ்ரி இயர் அட்மினிஸ்டர்ட் பை த போர்ட் ஆஃப் டிரெக்டர்ஸ் வித் ஓவர் 35 இயர்ஸ் ஆஃப் எக்ஸ்பீரியன்ஸ் இன் தி டீச்சிங் ஃபீல்ட் ஸ்பெஷல் அட்டென்ஷன் ஆன் ஆர்ட் கிராஃப்ட் மியூசிக் டான்ஸ் சிலம்பம் யோகா ஸ்கேட்டிங் அண்ட் கராத்தே ஃபோக்கஸ் ஆன் ஹிந்தி சபா அண்ட் ஸ்பெல் பி ஒலிம்பியாட் எக்ஸாம்ஸ் ஸ்மார்ட் கிளாஸ் ஃபார் எஃபெக்டிவ் அண்ட் இனோவேட்டிவ் லேர்னிங் அண்ட் வெல் ஃபர்னிஷ்ட் லைப்ரரி சாலிட்டரி இம்பார்ட்டன்ஸ் ஆன் ஸ்போர்ட்ஸ் அண்ட் கேம்ஸ் இன் ஸ்டேட் அண்ட் நேஷனல் லெவல் வாட்ஸ் அப் facilities to know activities of students and school inside the campus neat jee iit coaching experts from rajasthan and andhra pradesh along with our effective teachers admission registration for classes lkg2 plus 2 kurunji educational institution kaveti patti namakkal admission in progress cbse kg2 12th contact 9025895176 metric 6212th contact 9344567484 for online admission log on to www.kurunjischoolnkl.in in continuation to the last class in this class we are going to concentrate on the next continuing problems no so in our previous class we completed up to the problem number 5 and now we start with problem number 6 right see here a hydrogen atom initially in the ground level absorbs a photon which excites it to the n is equal to 4 level i'll repeat once again you try to understand the situation here the question number 6 you know a hydrogen atom initially in the ground state or okay ground level hydrogen atom initially in the ground level absorbs a photon you know that photon is a pocket of energy right which excites it to the n is equal to 4 level n is equal to 4 level determine the wavelength and frequency of photon determine the wavelength and frequency of photon okay right so first uh, what is the formula to calculate energy of an electron in the nth orbit energy of an electron in the nth orbit of atom in the nth orbit of hydrogen atom that is what you know en is equal to minus 13.6 by n square minus 13.6 by n square electron volt electron volt okay so energy of an electron in the nth orbit of hydrogen atom en is equal to minus 13.6 by n square electron volt but here you know he is asking hydrogen atom initially in the ground level absorbs a photon which excites it to the n is equal to 4 level right so it is going from ground level to the fourth level ground level to the fourth level right so when when it is in the ground level what is the energy use this formula that is minus 13.6 by n square so you just substitute what is the value of n which is 1 right so when you are writing in place of uh, n is equal to 1 when we are writing 1 in place of n you know it is minus 13.6 by 1 square that is equal to minus 13.6 electron volt minus 13.6 electron volt okay and when i was explaining this problem when i am explaining this problem you have to keep in mind what is the nucleus okay what is the atom basically and what is the nucleus and uh, where the orbits are present right how the electrons are revolving and what is the present in the nucleus that is what protons and neutrons right and you know what is the ground level and what is the first level what is the second level third level fourth like that we have to imagine okay uh, then only can understand this problem easily so especially here he is talking about hydrogen atom okay right so whatever it may be uh, you have to keep the structure of atom in our mind uh, to understand this problem okay so the structure of atom means inside the atom there is a nucleus right so in the nucleus there are protons and neutrons okay so outside the nucleus there are orbits in those orbits the electrons are revolving in those orbits the electrons are revolving 
and you know the fact from uh, Bohr's theory, right? And you know when the electron gains energy, when the electron gains energy, it goes from low energy level to the high energy level, right? For example, if the electron is revolving in first level, that is what level one, n is equal to one. If it gains energy, means what happens? It goes to the next higher level, that is what n is equal to two. Suppose now it is revolving in n is equal to two level. From here onwards, if it gains energy, it goes to the third level. That is what n is equal to to n is equal to three. Now it is revolving in third level. If it gains some energy, means anywhere, anywhere, anywhere from external source of energy, right? So when it gains energy, means then it goes to the next level, right? So like that, it is going on. Similarly, similarly, you just assume one electron, assume one electron. Which is revolving in the fourth orbit. That is what fourth level. Uh, okay, fourth level. Suppose it loses some energy. Any case, okay, whatever the situation, when it loses some energy, what will happen? It comes to the fourth level to the third level. It comes from fourth level to the third level. In third level, it 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 revolves. So when it is revolving in third level, again it loses means. It goes to the second level, right? So like that, it goes from fourth level to the third level, then second level, then to the first level, like that, right? And how much amount of energy it required? For example, it has to go from second level to the first level by by releasing certain amount of energy. Otherwise, you know, it wants to move from first level to the second level, right? So whether the required amount of energy or the amount of energy released. Whatever it may be, which depends upon the difference in the two energy levels. Difference in the two energy levels. Okay, that's what I want to say. Okay, you know every level has its own energy, right? And the second level, I mean, whatever it may be, either first level or second level or third, whatever it may be. Okay, I'm not talking about only hydrogen atom. Here the problem is related to hydrogen atom, but the general situation, the general phenomena, right? The general consequences takes place in case of electrons when they are present in atom, when they are moving from one orbit to another orbit, and when they are moving in one particular orbit. Okay, so in this area I am talking. So please keep in mind this total information when we are dealing like these problems, right? Not only like these problems, anywhere you are almost in throughout this chapter atoms, right? So anywhere we are. We have to keep this information in our mind, okay? And according to Bohr's theory, there is also information about right stationary orbits, right? So when when one electron is revolving in one stationary orbit, you know it doesn't emit energy, it doesn't absorb energy. The energy of the electron is con the energy of the orbit is constant, right? So the electron when the electron is revolving in one particular orbit, that is what stationary orbit means. It doesn't release energy and it doesn't absorb energy. That is what uh, the meaning of uh, stationary orbit. Okay, right. So this is already we learned in that uh, atomic structure. Okay, so where we studied about that atomic structure, you know, basically mostly in in physics point of view, I am talking ma. In physics, in this chapter atoms, right. So we focused mostly on Rutherford's atomic model and Bohr's atomic model, right. According to Rutherford's atom model, it's okay. That is what the presence of nucleus and most of the mass of the atom concentrated at its uh, center, which is called as nucleus, right? And through the alpha scattering experiment, we experienced the presence of nucleus experimentally. It's okay, right? But whereas, if you come to the point of, if you come to the point of, uh, okay, when when we are going to move from Rutherford's atom to the Bohr's atom, atom, you know, Rutherford's model failed to explain. Fail to explain that is what uh, the energy, right? The energy of the orbits and uh, what happens when it goes from one orbit to the another orbit, right? That is what, uh, according to Rutherford's model, we may conclude that you know there is a chance for the lost. Uh, there is no chance uh, for this. Uh, for that is what the electron has to lose its energy and then finally the electron has to fall into the nucleus, according to Rutherford's model, right? But uh, there itself, uh, Bohr's entered into the picture. He explained. He explained the energy diagrams and you know uh, what happens to the electron 
regarding the energy when it moves from one level to the another level as I told just now, just before two minutes, okay. So this is the main and core information, is the main and core information regarding the atomic structure uh, from physics, okay, from physics point of view, right. So uh, what is the hard work, what is the information uh, given by Rutherford, right, and what are the drawbacks of Rutherford's model and uh, what about the Bohr's theory, right? And I mean, what is the valuable information given by Bohr, right? And uh, th th that is, that is enough for us, okay? And you know, one more equation that is what, uh, according to Bohr's theory, E2 minus E1 is equal to H nu. E2 minus E1 is equal to H nu, right? So that is, actually E is equal to H nu, ma. So the difference in the energy of any two levels, the difference in the energy of any two levels that you can write it as like uh, E is equal to H nu, E is equal to H nu, okay, E is equal to H nu, right. Now, so what I am saying is, what I am saying is, uh, that is the information you have to keep in mind, then these all the steps you can easily understand, not only for this problem, uh, because this chapter is autumn now, so we must keep in mind, okay. Now, see here. You know, energy in the ground, N is equal to 1 level, that is, just we are substituting this formula, we are getting minus 13.6 electron volt, right. So what about energy in the fourth level? What about the energy in the fourth level, that is, E4 is equal to minus 13.6 by 4 square, minus 13.6 by 4 square, that is, uh, minus 13.6 by 16, that is equal to minus 0 0.85, minus 0 0.85 electron volt, minus 0 0.85 electron volt, okay, right. Next, uh, see here, you know delta E is equal to E4 minus E1, because we want to find the difference in energy, we want to find the difference in energy, that is delta E is equal to E4 minus E1, okay. E4 minus E1 is equal to that is minus 0 0.85 minus of minus 13.6 minus 0 0.85 minus of minus 13.6 is equal to you know minus of minus into minus plus no. So minus 0 0.85 plus 13.6 that is equal to 12.75, 12.75 electron volt and that you can write it as you know 12.75 into 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. So which is the conversion of energy from electron volt into joules. That is what 12.75 uh, into 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 joules. Right. As, as delta E is equal to H nu that is equal to Hc by lambda as delta E is equal to H nu that is equal to hc by lambda, okay. Therefore, wavelength lambda is equal to, therefore, wavelength lambda is equal to hc by lambda e, that is what uh, lambda is equal to hc by lambda e, that is equal to 6.63 into 10 to the power of minus 34 into 3 into 10 power 8, 6.63 into 10 to the power of minus 34 into 3 into 10 power 8 divided by, you know, 12.75. So, whatever the value we got it here in terms of joules that we have tried, 12.75 into 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19. That is equal to, you know, this value in, in angstrom unit, right? This value in angstrom unit, right? You can write it as, first we are getting in meters, ma. That you can convert into again angstrom unit, right? So, in meters, this is what, uh, if you do this calculation, ma, that is 0 0.975, 0 0.975 into 10 to the power of minus 7 meters, 10 to the power of minus 7 meters, that is equal to 975 angstrom unit, 975 angstrom unit. It is what uh, wavelength, right? So, he is asking to find I mean, he is asking to determine the wavelength and frequency of photon, wavelength and frequency of photon, okay, right. So that is what here, uh, wavelength is 975 angstrom unit. Next, uh, 
frequency nu is equal to this formula you know that is what the c by lambda that is equal to 3 into 10 power 8 divided by 0 0.975 into 10 to the power of minus 7 right so what is the lambda lambda here we found no this is in angstrom minute but here we are writing in meter per second sorry meters it is in meters per second now so this value should be in meters right so si unit and here also si unit and i told you here if you do this calculation you will get the answer as 9.75 into sorry 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 0 0.975 into 10 to the power of minus 7 meters right it is conversion into angstrom unit right so anyhow if you write the wavelength in meters here finally you will get it as 3.077 3.077 into 10 to the power of 15 h 3.077 into 10 to the power of 15 h this is what uh, frequency frequency of right frequency of photon so in this problem in this problem he is asking right he is he has given a hydrogen atom initially in the ground level observes a photon which excites it into the n is equal to 4 level so for this situation he is asking to find to determine wavelength and frequency of photon wavelength and frequency of photon okay right so by using this formula en is equal to minus 13.6 by n square electron volt first we found e1 that is minus 13.6 electron volt by substituting n value as 1 and then we found e4 that is by substituting n value as 4 minus 13.6 by 4 square that is equal to minus 0 0.85 electron volt right afterwards we found the difference in energy no? that is delta e is equal to e4 minus e1 that is equal to minus 0 0.85 minus of minus 13.6 that is equal to 12.75 electron volt finally if you find this value in joules that is 1 to that is 12.75 into 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 joules okay so delta e is equal to h nu that is equal to hc by lambda therefore wavelength from this formula from this relation wavelength lambda is equal to hc by del e that is equal to 6.63 into 10 to the power of minus 34 into 3 into 10 to the power of 8 divided by 12.75 into 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 that is equal to 975 975 angstrom unit okay right and afterwards you know frequency nu is equal to frequency nu is equal to c by lambda right c is equal to nu lambda you know frequency nu is equal to c by lambda that is equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 8 divided by 0 0.975 into 10 to the power of minus 7 0 0.975 into 10 to the power of minus 7 is equal to 3.077 into 10 to the power of 15 heads it is the frequency and this problem you know it is very very important problem for neat point of view also even JWE mains point of view also right and it is most important for NEAT very 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 important problem for NEAT okay right next uh, see here next problem using the Bohr's model calculate the speed of the electron using the Bohr's model calculate the speed of the electron in a hydrogen atom using the Bohr's model calculate the speed of the electron in a hydrogen atom in the n is equal to 1 comma 2 and 3 levels in the n is equal to 1 comma 2 comma and 3 levels okay right next uh, b that is what uh, calculate the orbital period in each of these levels calculate the orbital period in each of these levels okay right now you are, we are going for answer see this a using Bohr's model calculate the speed of the electron in a hydrogen atom in the n is equal 1 comma 2 comma and 3 levels right but the formula for speed of the electron in Bohr's nth orbit ma, Vn is equal to 2 pi k e square by n into h the same thing you can write like this that is what uh, V1 by n V1 by n right so Vn is equal like this this is what V1 by n 
and you know he is asking to find speed of the electron in a hydrogen atom in the n is equal to 1 2 and 3 first we will go for 1 that is what v1 is equal to 2 pi k e square by h h is the Planck's constant and you know by substituting all these values those are for example 2 pi 2 into 3.14 into 9 into 10 to the power of 9 9 into 10 to the power of 9 into 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 whole square minus 19 whole square divided by 6.63 into 10 to the power of minus 34 6.63 into 10 to the power of minus 34 that is what uh, Planck's constant value is equal to if you do that process if you, if you complete that mathematical process you know we will get it as 2.186 2.186 186 into 10 to the power of 6 10 to the power of 6 meters per second okay right this is what the speed of electron in Bohr's first orbit v1 next according to the problem he is asking to find speed of electron in a hydrogen atom in n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 3 orbit also right you know in n is equal to 2 orbit in n is equal to 2 that is what in second orbit what is the speed of the electron right what is the speed of the electron means right from this formula that is what vn is equal to v1 by n now right so what can we write v2 is equal to v1 by 2 v2 is equal to v1 by 2 right so when v2 is equal to v1 by 2 that is what finally 1.093 1.093 into 10 to the power of 6 meter per second you just take this value you just take this value and it is as v1 because already we calculated no right so v1 is this value divided by 2 that is equal to 1.093 into 10 to the power of 6 meter per second comma v3 is equal to v1 by 3 same formula then it will be divided by 3 0 0.729 into 10 to the power of 6 meter per second okay right and then we are going for b so what is b calculate the orbital period in each of these levels each of these levels okay right orbital period of electron in Bohr's first orbit is orbital period of electron in Bohr's first orbit is that is what uh, t1 it is t1 now, right it is t1 t1 is equal to you know the formula is time is equal distance by speed no so that is the formula here t1 is equal to 2 pi r1 by v1 that is equal to 2 into 3.14 into 0 0.53 into 10 to the power of minus 10 this is the value right this is what uh, 0 0.53 into 10 to the power of minus 10 that is r1 that is r1 okay so next uh, divided by 2.186 that is what v1 ma, right that is what v1 you know that is 2.186 into 10 to the power of 6 is equal to 1.52 1.52 into 10 to the power of minus 16 10 to the power of minus 16 1.52 into 10 to the power of minus 16 seconds minus 16 seconds okay that is what uh, orbital period of electron orbital period of electron in Bohr's first orbit in Bohr's in Bohr's first orbit is 1.52 into 10 to the power of minus 6 1.52 into 10 to the power of minus 6 uh, second sorry 1.52 into 10 to the power of minus 16 10 to the power of minus 16 seconds okay ma right so similarly similarly you can find out that is what uh, t2 and t3 also t2 and t3 also so what is t2 see here what is t2 what is t2 and what is t3 the formula tn is equal to tn is equal to right tn is equal to here n cubed into t1 n cubed into t1 okay so when it is n cubed into t1 that is what uh, 
T2 is equal to 2 cubed mm. into T1 because already we calculated T1 no? that is 1.52 into 10 to the power of minus 16 seconds okay see here so it is Tn is equal to n cubed into T1 no? so from there T2 is equal to 2 cubed into 1.52 into 10 to the power of minus 16 ma. so if we do that calculation we will get it as 1.22 into 10 to the power of minus 15 1.22 into 10 to the power of minus 15 seconds and afterwards t3 is equal to same process just in place of n we have to put 3 so t3 is equal to 3 cubed into 1.52 into 10 to the power of minus 16 is equal to which is 4.10 finally you can write it as 41.04 41.04 into 10 to the power of minus 16 to write the order this is what 10 to the power of minus 15 you know 4.10 into 10 to the power of minus 15 seconds okay right and next problem that is problem number 8 see here the radius of the innermost electron orbit of a hydrogen atom is 5.3 into 10 to the power of minus 11 meters 5.3 into 10 to the power of minus 11 meters what are the radii what are the radii of the n is equal to and n is equal to 3 orbits right see the question ma? that is what uh, the radius of the innermost electron the radius of the innermost electron orbit of a hydrogen atom is 5 it is a constant value ma? this is you know for hydrogen atom you know it is 5.3 even in our previous problem here also we used that value right okay 5.3 into 10 to the power of minus 11 meters is the radius and what are the radii of n is equal to and n is equal to 3 orbits okay right so as simple as such by giving r1 you know by giving r1 right by giving r1 he is asking to find r2 and r3 so if you know that relation you can find out easily that is rn is equal to n square r n is equal to n square into r1 and first r2 is equal to just write down in place of n you write 2 2 square into this value 5.3 into 10 to the power of minus 7 then finally we will get it as 2.12 you know 2.12 into 10 to the power of minus 10 meters 2.12 into 10 to the power of minus 10 meters similarly similarly you can calculate that radius okay radius of the third orbit that is n is equal to 3 so r3 is equal to 3 square into 5.3 into 10 to the power of minus 11 okay that is you know 3 square means 9 9 into 5.3 into 10 to the power of minus 11 so therefore r3 is equal to 4.77 into 10 to the power of minus 10 meters okay so here we calculated radius of the second orbit and radius of the third orbit as r2 is equal to 2.12 into 10 to the power of minus 10 meters and r3 is equal to 4.77 into 10 to the power of minus 10 meters okay right in this class we discussed three problems right and you know in the first problem that is sixth problem we calculated the wavelength and frequency of photon when when uh, when the that is what uh, when first electron is in ground level and then the electron is in a fourth level because of absorbing a photon so there itself we calculated wavelength and frequency of photon in the next problem in seventh problem i mean in in our, in our class next problem we found that is that is what we calculated speed of electron in the board's first orbit right that is he is asking to find even in second and third orbit also right so we found speed of electron in different orbits like n is equal to 1 2 and 3 levels next afterwards he also asked to find orbital period that also we calculate that, that also we we calculated that is t1 t2 and t3 in the last problem he is asking to find a radius of second orbit and third orbit that also we did okay by using this relation rn is equal to n square into r1 okay right thank you we'll continue in the next class